Damon X Machina is a mech game for the anime enthusiasts in the roughly teen ages, made by the same studio that brought you anime ninja titties game. If you're expecting cringe, expect it in full force if you actually watch the cutscenes. For the purpose of this video, I did in their entirety. And I'm gonna summarize that point with this comparison. Catch you kids later. Sergeant. Sergeant! Ah! No, this isn't happening! There's no reason for me to go on. What? What am I fighting for? Well, moving on, I want to preface that this game is a huge love letter to specifically Armored Core 4 and Armored Core 4 Answer. It features a lot of the exact same gameplay and even has a reference to White Glint in one of the mechs named Radiant Gleam. A more obvious analog to that game there could not be. So in the same vein, you have detailed stat screens, many, many weapon types, lots of customization options, and combat that involves picking your mission from a list and hearing a briefing before getting down to business, shooting at targets, tiered sizes and difficulty, with an auto lock function and boosters to keep things professionally paced. Even the soundtrack you'll hear in the hangar and during missions is actually pretty decent. The audio balance is pretty out of whack to start with and you gotta fix it in the menus yourself so that the songs stand out. But let's get down to what's different. The brass tacks as you would. Because as far as similarities, I'd rather just do a review on Armored Core 4 instead of talking about that game too much here. The first things first, there's a button for getting out of the mech. You can reasonably spec out and fight mechs on foot if you absolutely have to. I've never actually seen this in a mech-centric game and it's really just neat. After a match, on the stat side of things, you have damage input and output. It informs you what types and when you're taking it to accurately estimate what resistances to build around and what ammo types you need to be on the lookout for. It even tells you what your boosting efficiency is based around when you're boosting and when you're taking damage. This kind of stat tracking is a tuner's dream. Instead of buying parts outright, this game wants you to salvage what you can and develop new parts out of that salvage in your factory. These parts aren't necessarily straight upgrades, and you have to think carefully about what to build and what to hold off on. After you beat the main story, there's an astronomical amount of endgame content if you're looking for it, including side content, exclusive boss fights, and even a dungeon dive. You can do these co-op missions with AI you've unlocked based on your progress through the story. So if you want to take a break and do some of this while you're playing the main game, you can. You can also just get the toughest AI and smash through these. What's this though? Temporary stat boost in the form of an ice cream shop? This is weirdly cool, and I can dig it, but honestly didn't use it until I was in the end game doing online content and learned online that you have to spend a lot on ice cream to unlock the secret equipment development factory. What? This game's art style is okay. I actually like the mechs a lot, but the character designs themselves kind of bother me. This is exacerbated in that every single suit looks the same, and every character has this glossiness to them that makes it look not cell shaded as intended, but instead covered in oil. <sighs> Mech games in general tend to be either way too far into realism, way too far into anime. This one leads into the anime pretty damn hard. Strangely, you have a pretty decent character customization system. You really wouldn't have guessed what was in here just looking at any other character in the game. Unfortunately, it has to make way for the human augmentation system, which is a conflicting design. I don't know how to fix this, and I don't know what really else to say about it except that it just feels odd. Even the build path for the body augmentations makes no fucking sense. You just sort of have to build whatever you feel like doing at the time. Trying to go for one specific stat has mixed results because of how the tree is laid out. Now, we get into the game's story. Which, as I've briefly mentioned, is a hot mess that makes absolutely no sense. It sucks. I could name any number of reasons the plot dives in on itself, but the truth is that you're just gonna want to hit that good old skip cutscene button every single time. Some of the characters are alright, some of them are laughably generic and boring, probably written by a 15 year old. I just wish everyone would die. Doesn't matter, as none of their arcs are explained well nor resolved in meaningful ways. It starts out okay enough and tries to be mysterious and enigmatic, but it ends up making you feel like you don't have any choices as a player. You just sort of watch the story very, very, very slowly unfold in a decently predictable and not at all exciting manner. There's a large focus narratively on each pilot's individual skill, but nothing gameplay-wise nor in the mission structure to back that up. Cutscenes, 
though I struggle to call them that, consist a lot of two groups of mechs just standing still, pointing their guns straight at each other while they talk about something arbitrary. The exact same gun raising animation plays over and over, and you'll get sick of this break in the action. It lacks the same sense of cohesion that mech games with a more thought out setting have. Thematically, it isn't the strongest. Hell, they still call you Rookie after you prove you can beat entire factions by yourself. Why is that your nickname? Why is Rookie a nickname for an ace pilot? What? Rookie, I'd like you to accompany them. You got nothing to worry about with me and the Rookie on this one. Mission objectives are pretty haphazardly made. There's not a whole lot of building destruction or needing to take care of every enemy in an area. The game rewards you for sticking more to the letter of the mission object, even if that's not the most fun way of doing things. The missions are kind of too short because of this. I'd take some padding. It's not long enough to be satisfying. You could easily accomplish this by mixing and matching previous mission objectives or gameplay concepts into later levels, but the game misses out on that opportunity entirely. I know this is a stretch to say, but it's kind of an insult to my intelligence, because enemies just become completely immune to damage sometimes, whether it's convenient to the plot or just convenient to the game itself. There's a lot of times you'll be hitting something and absolutely nothing happens. I know that mechs have a shield they can turn on and off, but there are times when enemies will just not have it on. You can see that because it's visibly there and they'll still be taking either very reduced or absolutely no damage. I can't explain the reasoning behind this. I can't fathom why they thought they needed to do this, and I can't understand when the game decides it's a good idea for the enemy to be invulnerable or not. That all said, it takes a little bit of time to open up to you difficulty-wise. When it does, you still feel a little dissatisfied because of the mission lag. But the biggest sin of this experience is that while you're in the hangar, you cannot pet the dog. What the fuck? What the fuck? Alright, another mech game under my belt, and I'm really getting to cover things I enjoy playing. It wasn't obvious, I actually kind of love this game, but also gonna hate it. The things I dislike about it are so easy to ignore that I can just sort of enjoy what's here. I don't really have much else to say at the end of this video, but I'd appreciate it if you all gave me other reviews to watch. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. Thank you so much for listening to me talk, have a good one.